Today we head south to Littleton where we find Ben Woods keen to talk about his new album, Dispeller, a record that has been described as weirdly accessible. Ben put his new album together with another Ben, the much sought after producer Ben Edwards. We start our conversation with Ben about his upcoming tour. I left them away to peruse in their gowns. So uh, you're, hit, you're hitting the road to promote your album? Yeah. What's the, uh, the live situation going to be like? Do you have a band with you? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got a, um, it kind of changes every tour, really. But, um, and that's the nice thing about being like, you know, doing it on my own. But this time around, I think it's probably one of the best ones we've had. We've got, um, I'm not sure if you've talked to Ryan Fisherman before. Don't He's know. like a country Don't artist know. from down here. He was like, um, I think one of the nominees for the country artist of the year last year, but he's he's a good friend of mine. He's playing in the band. And then um small yeah, a bunch of people that I've kind of met through strangely through jazz school or um or just through, you know, that kind of incestuous right. small scene mingling that kind of happens, you know? Yep. It's yep. kind of a, it's a it's a big cast and they're all quite different, but I like that, you know, we've got my friend Ruben, who's um going to be playing horns, so we're kind of like expanding more and more to the point now where we can have just like a full time horn player and cool, you know. So yeah, yeah. Be good. Most you play most of the instruments on the album yourself, is that correct? Yeah, yeah, pretty much all of them, I think, apart from a little bit of slide guitar. Right. So so how, so when you kind of hand over these duties to the folks that are touring with you what's the process like for you do you have to kind of think about you know specifics more than when you were yeah. just doing everything yourself i like that i like it to be different you know like in the studio there's a certain um especially when it's just you you know everything is very almost like feels like you're in like a lab or something you know everything's like very measured right. and and you're careful you know and i know exactly like what i want to go for whereas when it comes to having other people involved i'd never i feel like you know it just loses all it loses all feeling mm. you try stifle people's own you know like creative intuition by telling them exactly what to do right so it's kind of like when we get the band together then we're able to um kind of just see go through the songs and kind of figure out what like you know where they're kind of naturally going towards and then we yeah. can flesh that out and make this whole other different thing especially because you know with this um album a big part of it for me was not like my first one i felt like i had a very clear band sounds that i wanted like you know i just wanted i almost wanted to have a band rather than think of myself as a solo artist right whereas this one was like oh but now i can do whatever i want so i'm <laughs> going to make a point of every song you know like try to drastically change things up yep yep so it definitely so, doesn't sound like a band album that's for sure and it yeah. sounds quite a, you worked with ben edwards down in his studio the two bens working together there but it, it doesn't yep. sound like a typical album that he has had in, involvement with. So what kind of discussions did the two of you have about what you were making? Yeah, I think. I mean, he's he has a, a lot of love, I think, for, um, for music that isn't. I mean, he likes lots of like more experimental stuff and mm -hmm. heavier stuff, actually. But I think because of just where he found himself and his friends, you know, he became the kind of alternative country guy. Yep. Or folk guy, you know, which he does amazingly well. And he loves all that stuff. But I think the fact that I approached him and was like, there's things that I want that I can, you know, that I hear in your recordings from the studio, like the, the roominess and the kind of depth of it all. Yep. You know, I still want that, but everything else, we're just going to. I don't know, we're just going to throw everything at the wall and try and make it weird. And I think that was kind of um, kept him, I don't know, just excited him. And I think maybe even made him more creative in his kind of production role, you know, because he wasn't a lot of the time just, you know, 
going with what he knows right it's going right. to work you know because you know? yeah that's mm-hmm. the thing as well when the, when the production becomes like a, mu- a part of the i feel like with my recording it can be often a lot more of a musical and creative position to be in because we will end up you know getting guitars and throwing them through some old like tape equipment and then sending them out somewhere else and then and then kind of messing with them more and through all that um processing you know kind of that creates like pretty much its own instrument so it becomes not just capturing something well it's kind of like you're creating this different thing that is intentionally not captured well but you want to bend it the right way yep 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 well you used the term weird and i saw somebody had referred to the sound as or the album is being weirdly accessible. So I oh, guess yes. <laughs> weirdness <laughs> is what it's all about, huh? <laughs> well, I guess so. Not not intentionally, like I don't want to freak anyone out. Right. But I for me, when it comes to the music I love, there's always like I love, you know, real simple classic songwriting in, in a lot of ways. And you know, all the classics, like you know, all of them, Cohen and Dylan and all that. Yeah. I can definitely get behind that. But at the same time, there's something I love about people who are just, in terms of the musical aesthetic or whatever you want to call it, you know, the instrumentation, when they just bend things as hard as they possibly can, that I can't help but feel excited by that. Yep. So I think I just can't help but go for both ends at the same time. Okay. And I think with that, I don't know. Yeah, it keeps people on their toes. I don't want to make people feel like, oh, that someone's like, you know, sometimes you can listen to music and you get the feeling that someone's trying to make you uncomfortable. And I definitely don't want to do that. Gotcha. But I want to make you feel like you're in some sort of dream or something, I guess, or in that part of your brain where things kind of warp together, but also don't make sense, but it's comforting. (laughs) All right. With that in mind, let's uh, let's touch on a couple of tracks. Uh, The Strip. Uh, is to me ha- has this kind of weird kind of almost Twin Peaksy vibe to it. Um, yeah, and there's like some bit broadcasts from outer space coming in and interfering yeah. and all that. What, what's going on there? It's one of my favorites actually and um it's got charlotte from the band womb as well who's um singing with me right who i love and their voice is just like for me brings that whole song together but um i can see the twin peaks vibe in that i wrote the song about it must have been like four or five years ago it was one of the ones from the first album that didn't make it but um to me, it's just trying to capture the essence of the, uh, the 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 middle of the city here where I live, where it's like you know there's a lot of um, I guess the Christchurch is quite sparse now after after right. the earthquake obviously, and yep. there's this like nightlife that exists in town, but it almost feels like um, almost like Canberra or something you know like where there's these if there's a lot of space in between uh, all these locations and so there's this you know you see like in the same way you see in other cities like Auckland or in Wellington where there's like the nightlife that all comes together on yep you know the strip I guess and and everything is disgusting and you know <laughs> people are yelling and all the rest of it there's that but there's also it's like there's a stillness and uh because it's so sparse it kind of it's a little bit more haunting than it should be you know and right. I found that I remember spending, you know, working and spending time in town. I don't know. That was just very, that was a very, very strong image to me. Okay. <laughs> so it's, it's where that song comes from. All right. Um, and that recording um, at the end there, 
yeah, that was just me going around, going around to bars at night with a tape recorder and seeing if <laughs> I could find something, you know, to paint, you know, just to, yeah, paint the picture. Cool. I kind of, yeah. Now, the other hard. one I want to touch on was Speaking Belt, because you got yeah. Alistair Galbraith helping you out with some, are there like animal sounds happening there? I don't know. He pulls the seams, shouts to his heel. Be his own relief, fosters the grief, and takes apart his parents' pictures when all the blood is given gives in time. This, that's a great thing, is uh, I asked Alistair if he would. Um, do something i just said you know i'm looking for vocal collaborations here's my idea and i sent him the song and when i sent it to him as well it was very different it was like a kind of rocking jammy band song right and um alistair got back to me and was like yep keen and then sent me some stuff back and it was that and i was kind of if you've listened to his music you know he's got like a very gentle and um i guess like idiosyncratic like very much himself right style of singing and i was kind of just expecting that but he put it through all these i don't know he was kind of cackling and putting it through all these like tape loops and sent it to me with the track in the background right and i was like whoa (laughs) like that's a lot and also i asked if i could um have the recording just isolated without the track on it right and then he he said to me ben i am a magical intuitive person (laughs) <laughs> and that's kind of a and also he's like kind of one of my heroes i reckon so that to me was just made me go oh I, like i've got to like just everything had to change you know because i had to meet that energy and i right. it kind of reframed the whole song so i ended up remixing pretty much the whole song and throwing it all back together and all these weird parts which is why it's so you know jumping everywhere and shifting but right it's amazing that yeah just his I guess that magical intuitiveness that he talked about, just like flip the song on its head and maybe be like, all right, I'm game for this. <laughs> and my understanding is you've already written your next record. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, I hope so. I've got, um, <laughs> I'm in my studio now and I'm looking at one of those little, what do you call it, pin boards that I've got on right. the wall. And it's got, I reckon, about 20 songs on it. And I just need to fit spend some time with them and f- right. figure out whether I need, if they're going to cut it, you know, but, um, yeah, I've just got to, I mean, the recording process is the real long, but writing them is always pretty quick. Right. But then, you know, it's like trying to actually, you know, get in that different frame of mind where it's not just throwing things on the page. Right. So, when, get, so when you have 20 the songs up on the board there, are you looking for kind of a thread that ties them all together or which ones are going to work together with each other? I kind of like to think that I'm just the thread and uh-huh. that it'll just naturally happen, you know, like keep it, try to keep it organic like that. But um, I think in that, yes and no, like, no, I'm not thinking of like a, a concept necessarily. Sure. But I'm sure. definitely thinking of just like what ones feel good, you know, and what ones, what is different enough and what is similar enough that I could like, you know, that you can have that nice flow thing. But um yeah, I think it's I think it's there. I think it's there. There might be one more, one or two on this dispeller record. That was oh. the thing that um, happened to me. It was like a week before recording, and I thought I, I knew I had everything, and I had it all fleshed out. And then, like two days before our recording, I wrote one more song, and it ended up being my favorite one on the album, which was uh, White Leather again, the last track. <laughs> How did that change everything what, what was it about that song that, that i think it was one of those ones that just came so easy and was quite quick and then the same with the like it's 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 probably one of the more melodic 
and kind of simple in a lot of ways, but it just felt like, yeah, there was no fighting for it at all. It was just like the song was there, started yep. playing on guitar when we started recording it and all the sounds kind of just like came pretty quickly. And I think it also has a feeling of resolve to it, which is why I put it at the end of the record. But I think it also was like resolve for that, you know, period of songwriting for me, yep. you know? Yep, yep. So uh, that definitely feels, I don't know. Yeah, I can't, that's probably why it's my favorite is because it just felt like it all came together finally, you know, in this nice way with that song. Gotcha, gotcha. So when you hit the road with this thing and you get your band together, are you attempting to recreate the sounds that we hear on the record or is are they going to be significantly different, do you think? Uh, a mix, I think. I think there's some sounds on it that I just um, desperately want for the songs and I think that makes them special. And so there's a few things that have to stay the same, but um, there's definitely a lot of shifting in that the instruments we're bringing like i said we've got ruben who's a horn player who plays um right. saxophone and uh, bass clarinet yep and most songs in fact all of the songs apart from one on the album don't have any horns so i feel like that we we use and he's just amazing so we just managed to use him as textural parts or lead lines so a lot of things get changed into that and right. um there's also that thing when you're on stage you know how it is like um, it's a, it's like a less because there's a lot of people there's this big energy in the room you've kind of got to bring things up a bit right? Can, can't be quite no one's like when you're listening to the record it's like you've got a microscope and everything is like right there whereas right. when you're in a big room and you're dealing with PAs and you know lots of people shouting <laughs> it's kind of becomes more of a um, yeah and do you have to read the room? Do you have to kind of get a vibe off the audience as well? And does that affect what you do? Absolutely. Especially with this kind of music, I feel, where it's like pretty slow a lot yeah. of the time. Um, and yeah, it, it, it can definitely be two ways. We can either bring it right down. If, you know, if it's, if it's a sit-down sort of crowd or if people are really locked in, it feels really nice to just like bring it even further back. So it, you know there's that whispery intense kind of um, atmosphere whereas in a lot of the time people want especially if they are and it's like a weekend you know people want, want things to be hard hitting yeah so we kind of <laughs> stretch things out and go on our own weird like adventures jamming and improvising through it excellent so you're going to be up here in auckland on it looks like september 2nd at the whammy bar right yeah, that's right. All righty. And we look forward to hearing what happens with the songs for the next album. <laughs> yeah. Th thanks so much, mate. Have a good day. You too. See ya. Catch you later. Bye-bye.